Do you know what today is? Today is National Go Over Yet, another list that includes a significant player from the Baltimore Ravens Day. Oh yeah, and it's also the day that the NFL rookies report to training camp, at least Ravens rookies. All the other rookies, I ain't really worried about them, but Ravens rookies report today. Uh, anyway, team camp clean, before we get into this list, which... Lamar Jackson, not a top five quarterback. Ooh, we, we're going to talk about it. But before we get into this list, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. Turn your notifications on. Leave a like on the video. And just know that I appreciate y'all for continuing to show love to not me, but to each other. I'll be seeing it in the comment section. I'll be having a lot of fun in the comment section. It's like a little party in the comment section every single video. So I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for remaining so engaged with the channel. Again, make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on because stuff is going to get very, very crazy very, very soon. And this week, this week alone is very, very special. So you will want to stay tuned for everything that we have on the way. Anyway, getting into it, getting straight into it. Patrick Mahomes, number one. I don't think anybody's going to argue that one at all. Two Super Bowls, been in three, uh, MVP, uh, every AFC championship game now goes through Kansas City. Uh, I think there's some crazy stat that I didn't even realize till last year. Uh, somebody said that they, these dudes have never even played, the Chiefs have never even played an away playoff game. And I was like, whoa, that is crazy. And what Mahomes been doing this thing for, for a while now. Again, it, it seemed like he been in a, a, every AFC championship game for the last 5, 6, 7, 12, 20 years, it feels like. Because they always there. But they are the definition of win. I mean, you could even start to throw around, around the word dynasty. Uh, they are like the Golden State Warriors of the NFL. They really are. Um, so, shout out to Patrick Mahomes. He is number one. He's a clear-cut number one. I don't think anybody would argue with that. Now... Joey B, they got Joey B, Joey Burrow listed as number two. Now, Joey B is a baller. Now, I know there are going to be a lot of people that say, oh, well, if he didn't have Jamal Chase, if he didn't have T. Higgins, if he didn't have all those weapons, then he wouldn't be who he is. And, hey, that could be true, but can you blame him for taking advantage of the weapons that he has? Like, no, like, oh, I wish that, like, the, the Ravens would have given Lamar Jackson, like, a plethora of weapons like that early on in his career. And I know, like, for the Bengals to get some of those weapons, it took a lot of losing. So I don't know if I want that part. But it's like you, you can't blame him for his situation. You can't blame the Bengals for putting him in that situation because, I mean, that's how they got him in the first place with doing all that losing. But anyway, Joey B is listed at number two. And, again, when he's remained healthy, when he's been healthy, and I know his rookie year he got hurt, but the next two years he was healthy and they made it to AFC Championship games both years and, and one year the Super Bowl. So – They've been having a lot of success, and he's been taking advantage of his situation. Uh, next up, Josh Allen. Now we know Josh Allen is a baller. Um, Josh Allen, uh, really good quarterback, playmaking quarterback. I know toward the end of the years and stuff, he get a little pick happy sometimes, but Josh Allen is a baller. Now, again, another thing with him, like we, all, we, we ain't even had to always say it, but y'all already knew too. With Josh Allen, when he first started out, people were like, ooh. I don't know about this guy, Josh Allen. Got him an elite receiver in Stephon Diggs. Literally completely transformed his entire career. And he never looked back since. So, coincidence? I think not. So, shout out to Josh Allen. Uh, number four, Aaron Rodgers from the Jets. Now, Aaron Rodgers, every single year, he puts up Madden numbers in the regular season. He'll throw for like 50, 60, 70 touchdowns and only like one or two interceptions. Now, I know that that is not the actual um, ratio. I know it's going to be. It's always somebody. He doesn't throw for that many to Relax. It's a joke. It's okay. Lighten up. But anyway, um, Aaron Rodgers always throws for a crazy number of touchdowns and a low number of interceptions. Um, now, will that transfer to the New York Jets? I think it probably will. Um, but we have yet to see. And we'll see this season. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, multiple time MVP. He got a bunch of MVP just sitting there. Sitting, sitting there on, on, on his trophy case and whatnot Just sitting there chilling and whatnot um, But now he is in a do, new environment New team And he just liked with Tom Brady Tom Brady I never thought Tom Brady would play for another team Besides the Patriots Aaron Rodgers I never thought he would play for another team uh, Other than the Packers And here we are I mean I probably should have learned my lesson from like guys like Brett Favre and whatnot But anyway uh, Let's keep it moving So Aaron Rodgers is sitting at number 4 And number 5 now, we mentioned that Lamar Jackson, on this list, he is not a top five quarterback. But who is the fifth highest quarter in the NFL? 
the fifth best quarterback in the NFL, according to this list, is Justin Herbert. It's Justin Herbert. Now, I do like Justin Herbert. I think Justin Herbert is a baller. But Justin Herbert has, I feel like he hasn't really taken advantage of his situation. I know Chargers defense has been kind of wishy-washy. But they just, he hasn't been a winner. He hasn't willed his team to win. And now, now he did get to the playoffs last year. So shout out to him. He made the playoffs. But I know they got, they had a big lead too. I mean, you could take that out on the coach if you want to. Because I know that, that was just. That was sloppy. <laughs> oh, they, they got out to this huge lead. Uh, Trevor Lawrence had thrown, like, he threw four interceptions. Uh, but then he came back and ended up throwing four touchdowns, and the Jaguars came back in. Well, that was a fun game, man. But, uh, yikes. But let, let, let's, read, let's read the why. Because, see, this, this is the part of the list where it's like, oh, okay, let, let, let's hit a why. Says, for Justin Herbert, Herbert's rise in the top ten has been steady. Yes, it has been. He's always listed as a top ten quarterback. That has been very consistent with people around the league. Anyway. Uh, but slower than that of draftmate Burrow, who has more playoff success. The way some evaluators see it, matching that success is only a matter of time, considering Herbert's cons considerable skill set. So what they're doing uh, with Justin Herbert, they're putting him what from what that just said. And let me know if I'm wrong, but it sounds like they're, they're putting him in the top 10 list. They're putting him in the top five based off of what they feel he is going to do. And based off of his skill set, not based off of what he's done, but what they feel like he's going to do, at least based off of those first two paragraphs. Let's let's keep reading. Uh, it says um, Herbert is at that hump where they need him to win now. An NFC scout said he's got everything you need, a fantastic player. But now it's time to make that jump. The offense put so much on him and that's hard for him. He often relied on a short passing game last season with his average of 6.3 yards, uh, air yards per attempt, ranking third lowest in the NFL ahead of only Daniel Jones and Matt Ryan. Herbert's big arm suggests he can do more. The addition of offensive coordinator Kellen Moore and first-round receiver Quentin Johnston uh, should aid that process. Moore can implement a vertical attack that will apply pressure on defenses with Herbert's arm talent. Herbert, who threw a career-low 25 touchdowns in 2022, posted 94 passing scores in his first three seasons, which ranks second to Dan Marino, 98 all-time during that span. Setting the stage for a big future contract, his 14,089 passing yards during that span ranks first all-time. That's a lot of yards. Uh, one high-ranking NFL official said it. Whatever the Chargers pay him, he'll be worth it. One NFL offensive coach said that Herbert missed one too many layup throws last season that proved disappointing when watching the tape. But that's being nitpicky. After all, he faced pressure 258 times last season, second most by any quarterback in a season since ESPN began tracking pressures in 2009. He's deadly. He's a problem. And the AFC exec said he's done well with the tools that he's had. So, again, with Justin Herbert, all the tools in the world, all the skills in the world, but from that, the ranking, it sounds like they, they are just hoping for future success with him. That's what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like, oh, it did, that from what we just read, from what I just read, to me, it doesn't sound like that's somebody who you would put as a top five quarterback right now because so much of it sounds like, all right, what is he going to do in the future? We expect him to do well in the future. We hope that he does well in the future. Because, again, you, you look at these other guys, Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, and Patrick Mahomes. They've had a, a lot of success. And again, Justin Herbert is not a bad quarterback at all. I think he is really good. But top five, it seems like they only have him up there based off of what they expect, what the expectations are, not what he's delivered on. Uh, well, minus all throwing all them 14,000 yards in the high pass rate, which is nice. But success, man, there's been just a lack of success. But anyway. This is about individual quarterbacks, and this is their opinion. So, hey, I, I respect it. But anyway, next, next up, somebody who has had a lot of success, overnight success, especially how things started. Things started off a bit rocky, but he turned it around. That's Jalen Hurts. Got Jalen Hurts listed at number six. Um, and then with Hurts, let's read about him too. We're gonna read. Uh, we're gonna read about the quarterbacks leading up to Lamar Jackson. It says, "Oh, Jalen Hurts. Hurts' total package elevated him to top six status. He's known as a tireless worker and a strong leader. Uh, he has grown as a passer every year. After posting a thirty thirty, uh, excuse me, a thirty three point eight QBR as a rookie in twenty twenty, he had a fifty four point six and a sixty six point four ratings over the following two years. And his savvy uh, as a runner, oh, and his savvy as a runner helps him break off timely rushes based off the reads of the defense. His eighteen rushing touchdowns represent the most by a quarterback in a single season." In NFL history What What Hold up What 
Did I Did I miss something Wait a minute Let me Let me go to ESPN.com Real quick Hold up 18 rushing touchdowns Justin Herbert I mean Jalen Hurts had 18 rushing touchdowns Last year Ain't no way even Let me see How many Rushing Touchdowns Did Jalen Hurts Have In 2022 See this says Jalen Hurts scored 13 rushing touchdowns In 2022 Okay Let me just look at it Okay Everything's saying 13 touchdowns 13 rushing touchdowns ESPN Plus Yup Y'all got to get this together, man. Oh, unless, unless they combining it with the playoffs. Okay, maybe that's what they doing. Maybe they combining it with the play- Don't word it like that, ESPN Plus. Don't do that. Don't 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 play games like that. I don't don't do that. Anyway, let's let's, let's keep going. He's one of those guys who has progressively added to his game. Uh, an NFL personnel director said Not really flappable Similar to Burrow in that sense He remains calm He can do all the things you need from the pocket I don't see why he can't be a precision passer Look at all the games where he's had to dial it up from the pocket He has that in his game So, again They talked about his game elevated They talked about what he's done now it, this, It's not projecting what he's gonna do So, I don't got no problem with him being in Obviously, he was just in the Super Bowl too So, and again With, with Jalen Hurts it's, it's no coincidence, man It's the same thing with Josh Allen, with Joe Burrow With all these boys It's no coincidence You give these boys good weapons You give them great weapons And, and watch how things change for Again, with Jalen Hurts They question him so much As a quarterback, as a passer as this, they, they question him so much They drafted Devonta Smith They traded for A.J. Brown And, and look, look what happened Coincidence? Nah, it, it, it ain't Number seven Somebody I think a lot of Baltimore Ravens fans are familiar with. Lamar Jackson, number seven quarterback on this top ten list. And let's read what they had to say about Lamar. His highest ranking was number four. His lowest ranking was unranked. Last year's ranking was an honorable mention. Probably because he didn't finish the season, most likely. That's why they put that. But let, let's just see what they had to say. Jackson surged back into the top seven after failing to crack the top ten a year ago. Uh, what changed aside from the appreciation that comes with signing a five-year, $260 million deal as the NFL's top earner? Well, his winning ways are hard to ignore. That's true. That's true. Especially with the, like, because you look at all these quarterbacks before him and you look at their supporting cast on offense. Seriously, you, you, you look at that. I was just talking to one of my guys about this the other day. Cause we were talking about, he was like, "Oh, well, where do you put Lamar Jackson on your on your list?" He 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 sent me a couple of different uh people's top ten quarterbacks list. He was like, "Oh, where do you put Lamar Jackson?" And I explained to him, "Well, look, it, the situation matters for sure." And you look at what those quarterbacks have done in their situation. Look, Lamar Jackson, what he's done in his situation, and I feel like that elevates him a lot. From <laughs> again, and and you know, with Ravens, the way that they've been on offense, they're not an offensive minded team. They ain't been that. Uh, and you look at the situations and, and the lack of weapons. Anyway, let's let's continue. Jackson surged back into the top seven after failing to crack the top ten a year ago. What changed aside from the appreciation that comes with signing a five-year, two hundred sixty million dollar deal as the NFL's top earner? Well, his winning ways are hard to ignore. The Ravens' winning percentage of uh, seventy-three oh point seven three eight. He's forty-five and sixteen with Jackson trails only Patrick Mahomes. Oh, who's at a point eight? Uh, Tom Brady, who's at a point seven five four, and Roger Staubach, who's at a point seven four six. He's still considered perhaps the most dynamic dual threat in the league. Uh, evaluators, I will say, in the history of the league. But anyway, evaluators also saw attempts at growth as a passer. Jackson's rushing attempts per game were down from eleven uh, to nine year over year. Uh, yet his QBR improved from fifty six point eight to fifty nine point one in the same span. Since two thousand nineteen, Jackson ranked second in the NFL in QBR. And, of course, 2019 was the first year where he started the entire season. Uh, Jackson posted a QB rating of 98 or higher in four of his first eight starts, and he was solid on third down with a 70.89 QBR, ranking 10th in the NFL. Prior to the knee injury, he was doing some big things from the pocket as a passer. An NFL scouting director said some of those early games, he was dialing it up. He's definitely evolving as a passer, uh, taking it to the next level. Uh, he's a smart runner. Teams want to peg him in that role, but he never really gets hit solidly. He knows how to elude and avoid big hits. Hold up. It, it, is this coming from me? Because they said that this was a, a NFL scouting director. I ain't no scouting director. But 
I've been trying to tell people that for years. Because people like, let's just say, oh, Lamar Jackson runs so much, he always going to get hit. He always gets hit. And there have been some people, I think Dan Ovlotsky was one of them, but there have been some people who've been put up, put up these numbers on how many times Lamar Jackson has gotten hit as a runner. And though the numbers are very misleading because he just, there's sometimes where he does take hits, but he don't really get hit like that. He'll slide. He'll go out of bounds. But he don't really never take big hits like that. Like you could, even at this point in his career, you could probably count on maybe one and a half hands. <laughs> Definitely not more than two hands, but you, you could count on less than two hands how many big hits, or like real legitimate hits Lamar Jackson has taken. So anyway, um, I said, yeah, questions about his precision passing remain. Jackson's 19% off target rate was the highest among any quarterback nominated for this exercise and ranked 27th among NFL starters behind Justin Fields, Carson Wentz, Marcus Mariota, and Davis Mills. Ooh, yikes. Now, is that about last year or is that just overall? Because if it's about last year, because uh, I know Jonah Schaefer, he did an article that uh, just really went over uh, the, the misses that Lamar Jackson had last year, the missed throws, because we know there was some missed throws. Um, but then when you think about it, see, context is very important. There were some throws that he straight up missed. There were. There were also some drops. There were also some receivers running the wrong routes. There were also what a lot of people pointed out to me. What Initially, sometimes I didn't even see it. But a lot of people pointed out to me, there were a lot of times where these receivers just slowed up. They slowed up on a route. And had they not slowed up, then boom, they would have been there. And so it, it all just depends on the situation. Like I said, they, they, these, these were not all Lamar Jackson's fault. They were not all the receivers' fault. They, like I said, there was sometimes Lamar Jackson just straight up missed. But context is super important. Then another thing, too, and shout out to Coach Evans, Sip the Tally. He made a really, really, really good point on this, which is very, very true. Uh, with how Jonas highlighted those 45 missed throws. I think it was 45, something like that. But he highlighted those throws. And Coach talked about how with uh, Patrick Mahomes, if Patrick Mahomes misses a throw, then it's not a big deal because Patrick Mahomes and Chiefs fans know that he's still going to get a lot more opportunities to make even more throws. Josh Allen misses a throw. Bills fans and everybody know they're not going to trip too hard because they know he's going to get a lot more opportunities to make another one. But with Lamar Jackson... His misses get emphasized that much more because there's not going to be many more opportunities there because of the way the Ravens' offense is. And that's something that we've been talking about on here for years, too. That every, every bad part of Ravens' offense, it gets emphasized so much because just of how they have been running. How, they have, how the offense has been moving. So especially with the, 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 the passing offense, everything is going to get emphasized that much more. Because the, the limited opportunity. So that is a really, really great point. Anyway, it says since entering the league in 2018, Jackson has been contacted. Oh, there you go. <laughs> contacted 877 times, 27 more than the rest of the quarterback field. Teams are eager to see whether elements of new offensive coordinator Todd Monken's system, uh, trips, empty spread offense, pistol passing concepts, elevate Jackson, who has new targets in Odell Beckham Jr., Save Flowers, and Nelson Aguilar. I can almost guarantee you. That that those two th well I mean I was about to say those two things alone I mean those are really big things going on like having a new offensive coordinator in the weapons I guarantee that, that it would change things for the better I really do believe that because I, I really do think with Lamar Jackson I think the the yards will go up as far as the passing yards I think the touchdowns will go up I think the interceptions will go up as well because if you're passing the ball more then I would expect there to be more interceptions too but. Not, and not in like no crazy bad way. Like, oh, I don't expect him to throw like 16, 17 interception, anything like that. But I, I do think that both will go up uh, significantly. Um, but it said, uh, he had excuses before. He won't have them now. An NFL personnel evaluator said, time to put it all together as a passer. Now, with Lamar Jackson, the only thing, um, in my opinion, that's really just held him back. Um, well, one of the, one of the, the big one of the biggest things because this ain't been the only thing, but because one of the things have been the offense, the way that the Ravens have ran the offense, but just injury. That that's been one of the biggest things right there, just injury, uh, not being there down the stretch. 
Because had Lamar been there down the stretch, especially the past two years, oh, yeah. Ravens would have a shot. They would have had a shot. Now, I mean, ooh, maybe last, maybe last year. I don't know about last year because they, <laughs> like, <laughs> ooh, the receivers, it was rough. It was rough, man. But, hey, but uh, they, they still would have been fighting, man. But that's what we want to see. That, that That's what we want to see the most. We want to see Lamar there in the thick of things. We want to see Lamar there. Uh, throughout the entire season, obviously, but definitely when it counts the most come playoff time, we want to see him down the stretch. Cause we want to see him bring it home for the Ravens. We want to see him bring it home, man. Um, so this year, huge year. He got he got his bread, so that's out the way. So he ain't got to worry about that no more. He ain't, ain't got to have no conversations about that no more. That's done. But now it's like, all right, what you gonna do now? So looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing how he does, and it, it, it's gonna be fun. Uh, now, number eight, T-Law, Trevor Lawrence. I like Trevor Lawrence a lot, man. Trevor Lawrence is, uh, he um he got that no quit in him. That that battle between him and Lamar Jackson last year was amazing. It would have been amazing, girl, if it would have ended a little different, but it's okay. It's all good. Shout out to T-Law, man. Um, and then number nine, and, and this is, I think this is my first time seeing him in a top 10 quarterbacks list, I believe. But anyway, shout out to T-Law. Number nine, Dak Prescott. Wow, Dak Prescott. I, ooh, I don't remember seeing him in the top ten list recently either. I don't think. So Dak Prescott from the Dallas Cowboys and to round it out, number ten, Matthew Stafford. Wow. Okay. They got some surprises in this list. ESPN Plus really, uh, they did some stuff with this one. Okay. Now, honorable mentions, Deshaun Watson from the Browns, Kirk Cousins from the Vikes, Jared Goff from the Lions, Derek Goff from the Saints, and Tua from the Dolphins. I can see how Tua is an honorable mention because I feel like he's like right there. Again, a Tua, this is, same thing with Tua and Lamar. Obviously, much different situation. Only thing that's been holding Tua back is just health. That's it. The man can play. He he can he can play. Tua can ball, man. And I know people making their jokes about Tua and stuff and all that, but Tua, Tua can play, man. And and, and he the ooh the weapons that he got. Oh my goodness, man. This, this dude like it's not fit. This dude got. Harry Kill and Jay Lil <laughs> it's, it's not it's not fair. and both of them are so good. But anyway, so two if he stay healthy, yeah, Dolphins, they gonna be a problem, man. They like a, a sneaky problem for the league. But anyway, team keep it clean. This was a uh, fun list to go over. Um, more lists to come, but again, this is a very special week, so make sure keep your eyes and your ears open and your notifications turned on. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video. I appreciate y'all for watching. I appreciate y'all for always having that positive vibe, man. No matter what it is that's going on, appreciate y'all for making it so much fun as y'all always do. Appreciate y'all for always having a good time on here, cause that's what it's about. I love y'all. Y'all have a great, fantastic, phenomenal day. And just like Lamar Jackson is when it comes to being on the top five of this list, actually even the top six, we out.